Hi, this is Sam Botstein from MachineSkills.com. Today I'm going to talk about working with the standalone machine application and Ableton Live, and some workflow ideas to get MIDI and audio out of machine and into live, and even how to get audio out of live and into machine. The first way I'm going to talk about is using the export audio function from machine 2 in the file menu. Just go to File and Export Audio. Now, there are a couple of different options under the Export pane, including the source. You can export just your master output, which is everything in the project. Uh, this depends on all of your settings. You know, if you have something soloed or muted, that will affect the output. In older versions of Machine, in order to output stems or different parts of the project, you would have to export the master output several times with different parts soloed or muted. In this version of Machine, it actually takes care of a lot of this for you. Under the Source menu, it'll let you choose between the Master Output, Group Outputs, which are um, the sum of all of the different things going on in each of your groups, and even individual sound outputs. If you don't want some of them, like let's say I didn't need any of my blips and bloops, I could untick them and then none of their contents would be exported but you actually can expand these and have individual control over which sounds get exported and which don't. If you name things uh, pretty clearly, it should be easy enough to be able to distinguish between the files once you've exported them. So I'm going to go ahead and export all of my sounds for this project. Under this other pane, which we'll just take a look at for a second, options, there are a couple of different options. There's the sample rate and bit depth options, which are really to taste, but I usually leave them on these settings just because I'm not going to introduce additional quality by turning these up. If I've only recorded things at a, you know, a bit depth of 24 bits and I export as 32 bits, it's not going to improve the quality of my audio. Um, same goes for the sample rate. These normalize options and loop optimize option are actually really cool. Um, if you're going to be using Session View and Ableton Live to sort of live remix your music, or um, if you are sort of just making stuff for the web and you're not going to have it professionally mastered or something, Normalize and Loop and Optimize can be really um, potentially helpful. But I usually leave them unticked because I like to do that kind of finishing type of production in Ableton Live as opposed to Machine. So one other element of this workflow that I've set up ahead of time is I've made a folder that is my default destination for exporting. I've just called it uh, Machine 2 Exports. You can put it anywhere, but um, I put mine in my Dropbox in a special folder. And then over in the Ableton Live side of things, I've added that folder to my browser. You can just click Add Folder. And then from there, you can select that specific folder. I already have it up here. And it's empty right now, but we're about to populate it with all of the sounds from that machine project we were looking at. So once we hit export now, it's going to export all of the sounds and all of the groups individually into that special folder, which Ableton will then find for me. So this is super useful. I now have all of the sounds with their um, recorded performance for the entire track on individual clips. So we can hear those blips, we can use them in the session view, you know, maybe we can warp them and crop them and whatnot. But you could even recreate the whole performance that you had in Machine by dropping them all into the arrangement view. If you just drop them this way, they would all be in sequence on one track, this one audio track I have. But if you hold down the Command key, they will populate into different tracks. Just give it a minute here. Now we actually have 64 audio tracks, which uh, make up the entire composition that I had going in Machine 2. So if we hit play on this... Thank you. 
you can hear that it's going to sound exactly the way it used to in Machine 2. This is potentially useful for mixing and mastering purposes, even though Machine has a built-in mixer that seems to work really well. Um, I, I really have gotten used to the structure of these fades, these logarithmic fades that you can do in Ableton Live 9. And there are all sorts of features of the Ableton software which uh, cannot really be duplicated in Machine. For one thing, uh, Max for Live is a, su is a super useful way to build and use plugins. Uh, but this is just one way to get audio in and out of live. Another way to do it is to use these click and drag options. Now in Machine 2 they've done something really cool in which when you have the entire group selected like this and you grab audio or MIDI, it'll grab the audio or the MIDI for that entire pattern. So all of the sounds in the group. So if I were to grab this audio clip here right now, and then drop it into live, we're going to hear that entire group. Now, if we were to drop into this keyboard mode, we would get only that selected snare that we heard here on pad number six. This is really useful. It lets you take patterns, sounds, and entire songs that you've made in Machine and recompose them in Ableton Live, master them in Ableton Live, finish them in Ableton. Uh, this folder structure in Ableton is much maligned, but I really find that for this purpose, exporting between different audio softwares, it works really excellently. Um, I especially like these naming conventions where we get the um, actual name of the project, the name of the sound, and then the actual BPM. It's very helpful, especially you can hear that it's already warping some of these uh, short samples to 129 BPM, which was the default setting I had for my live set, as opposed to the 150 we had up here. So this is a really, really cool workflow to try out. Um, it's free, it doesn't require anything beyond having both Machine 2 and Ableton Live 9. Now, one way to use this click and drag option for audio is to edit the samples, not in the sample plugin in Machine 2, but actually using Ableton Live's various ways of editing samples. So if we were to just grab this snare sound here, and drop it into an audio track, we would quickly be able to, you know, come in and crop it up and edit and put plugins on it and all that kind of stuff, and actually get it back into Machine 2. This makes it really easy to edit in Ableton Live and move samples back into Machine. So in this case, I have cut up this snare pattern, I've transposed it, I've made it quite a bit louder. I'm just going to crop it, and then I will throw it onto the pad in Machine from where it came, and we'll hear that it fits right back into the sequence and will work. It's just going to sound different. So this is a cool workflow. You can click and drag in between the two applications, but we can actually load up things that we've edited in Ableton in the browser and machine using this method I'm about to show you. So in machine's preferences there are the various locations in the library tab. There's all of the factory stuff that you might have from native instruments and then in the user folders you can actually add the directory that Ableton puts all your edited samples into. This can get kind of messy if you do a ton of work in Ableton, but if you really have a machine-based studio, this can work for you. All you would have to do is click Add, and then navigate to the Music folder, and then to the Ableton folder. It would then find all of the things in your user library, in the recordings that you've made, or even the factory packs. If you wanted to, you could import these separately, and then they would all be different locations that you could use from Machine's browser. 
So just for an example, we're going to uh, jump into this live recordings folder, and then we're going to choose it and give it the alias live recordings. Then when we hit rescan, it'll find all of the things in that folder, and then they'll be accessible through Machines Browser. So if we hop into Machines Browser here, and then into the sample area, and then the user area, not the native instruments area, we should be able to click here on all samples, and then find the folder live recordings, and then everything will be there. This is a really great way to move audio in between Machine and Ableton and it can even extend to MIDI. We can drag MIDI out of Machine into Ableton, edit it in Ableton, and then bring it back. So here's an example of that. We're just gonna grab this super simple MIDI pattern, this little snare thing here, and drag it into a MIDI track in Ableton Live. We can then edit it. Let's say you know we just wanted to crop it really quick. And from there, we would be able to actually export it and bring it back into machine and put it right back where it was edited. So try these out. Let me know in the comments what you think about these different workflow areas. And in a future tutorial, I will show you how to use the various VST versions of Machine 2 in Ableton Live and different workflows that can extend from there.